Okay, next up, old school in the house. <laughs> Third time on the stage. Is it th three times already? So I've known Alf for uh, more years than I care to know, or no, to care to admit, but Alf is a, a consummate entrepreneur, and he's launching this product at SF New Tech tonight called Masu. And uh, I think we're going to hear a lot about this moving forward. So Alf, the stage let's is yours. All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming out. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you tonight about, I, I hear the hot spot is right here. Yep. Make sure uh, you're in, in the microphone. Yeah. E and eat it, like, really close. If I favor, if I favor this side of the room, it's because I like to be on camera. Um, so uh, I have been working for a long time on this. And just to introduce myself really quickly, my name is Alf. Um, I've been working in sort of Wi-Fi for about 10 years. If you check out iStumbler.net, that's been uh, the 10-year-old product. Um, and for five years, I worked at Apple on wireless user experience. So the menu extra, the little menu thing that you pick wireless networks from is all my fault. Um, what I've been working on for a very long time is uh, the holy grail of wireless, right? This is, we've all wanted all the, wi all the internets everywhere all the time for a very long time. Many people have tried, and so far it hasn't happened yet. So we're going to take one last stab at it. Um, now, the danger, of course, is we may be tilting at windmills here. It's a big, big, big project. Um, and it's cool, though. Uh, the French technical press recently called me the white knight of Wi-Fi, so I'm totally set up for this. Um, so the problems we have right now for getting connectivity is first the user experience. Um, if you're on 3G or LTE, it's OK, because you never have to think about it. But if you're on Wi-Fi, it sucks. This is the stuff that I wrote. You have to figure out which network you're going to join. And once you have, you have to grovel around, beg for the password to get on there, OK? This is not fun. Uh, we all spend a lot of time juggling with this. It's just a hassle. Once you are connected, you're at the mercy of some of the worst companies in the world, OK? Uh, now, both Comcast and Time Warner are on the list, and we don't have to talk about the other ones. Um, so once you've gotten past that initial hurdle, it gets worse. And then even better. Right? As soon as you start pushing your information into the network, there are people out there who are very interested in it and want to, you know, monetize it um, and productize you. And, you know, we want to try and fix some of this stuff. So um, after 10 years in this business and having done a lot of time and effort um, everywhere from, you know, the factory to sitting on calls with people who are having problems with their Wi-Fi, um, the three things that we all care about are connectivity. If you can't get on the network, it doesn't matter. Performance, if it's not going fast, it's painful. And reliability, if it stops working, your life is kind of over. So in order to do this, we're going we're gonna to try and clear away some of these sort of existing barriers to entry, as it were. So no more choosing networks. We're going to make one network that you will always want to connect to, no matter what. And hopefully, we're going to make it available everywhere. Uh, no more network passwords. It, it turns out it's kind of a scam. Uh, you know, the, the Wi-Fi password protects you from here to the router, but after that, all bets are off. There's plenty of people out there who are more than happy to peek into your traffic. Most of them have three-letter acronyms. Um, and I think the biggest thing is that, you know, what we really all want is, is really ubiquitous, available everywhere, and really universal, available to everyone, okay? It's a big order. Once we've got connectivity taken care of, there's performance. We are now, this is uh, Akamai numbers, we are now number 10 uh, in the United States here. We invented the internet, and now we're number 10. Woo! Um, I think we can do a lot better than this. Um, the problem is the market pressure on the people who provide bandwidth is not quite what it should be to get it to work well. And finally, we need to make it more reliable, OK? How many of you have spent time looking at your phone, holding it up to the sky, hoping to get a signal Right, uh, rotating your laptop 90 degrees, trying to you know find just the right sweet spot so that you can download kitten pictures because this is what the internet was made for. Masu is going to fix this. Our design is to help reward people for providing a good network experience. We're here to reward you for providing connectivity, performance, and reliability. How do we do this? Well, digital currency is all the rage. So we have our very own coin, the Masu. Um, and Masu, unlike Bitcoin, relies on proof of connectivity, okay? So if 
we can prove that you have connected someone to the network and you've done so, you've done a good job of it, they're still on the network, um, we're gonna grant you coins. Uh, we have a verification system that deals with, you know, generating the coins and handing them out to providers and also managing the nasty, scary, you know, cryptographic dark art of blockchain monkey work. Um, and as a provider, so someone like Rocket Space here might want to become a provider, um, you're going to start accumulating coins as people use the network and you can then turn around and sell those to people, which is nice. Because um, now suddenly the free network that you're giving away makes you some money. Um, now, the question, of course, is why do you want the coins? What, good, what possible use are they, right? If I'm just giving them away, I'm printing money, that's a perfectly inflationary economy. Worst case scenario. Um, so what we've designed in the system is actually a way, uh, if you would like to have priority access over all the other people that are using it, you offer up coins to burn. You say, hey, let's take these out of circulation. I need to cut ahead of the line. That one, you know, that Game of Thrones episode's not downloading itself. Um, so we're trying to set up basically a balanced cryptographic economy that makes it possible for people to get universal access but still pay. Okay, so how do we make this happen? There's a retail solution. So we have sort of a point of sale set up. These are, this is a paper wallet on the left hand here. If you've done any cryptocurrency work, you might be familiar with those. Um, we have a, you know, attract attractive little box. Uh, that's, a, that's a Masu. If you spend much time in uh, sushi restaurants, they drink sake out of those. Uh, they actually used to serve a very different purpose. Uh, we're going to build a mobile app. So the mobile app runs on your phones. You use it to connect to the network. And it takes care of providing the sort of user side performance verification. We talk to the validation servers. They say, yep, yeah, we see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much to the person that's providing you access. We really, really want to build hardware. This is as far as we've gotten. <laughs> uh, a little pen and ink sketch. The first time we do it, it's going to have to be uh, some form of, I think, um, do I just get to bring my fucking phone? Ooh, perfect. Uh, so verifiers, yay, building this, building that, the other things. Why are we here? Uh, I'm actually, we're very, very early. So uh, we're looking for some key team members, particularly business development and advisors. Um, and then, of course, money. Everybody needs money, right? Uh, so some angel investors. Uh, we're doing a little bit of friends and family right now, but we want to sort of expand that circle. And it's me and my good friend Florian here, who's handling marketing, um, and hopefully somebody else. So, thank you. I think your mic is off. Who's? Is it green? Take no, mine. it's not green. It's red. What the hell? I don't know what's going on. All right. Oh, this is working. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay. Uh, my question to you is, you said you mentioned something about uh, Wi-Fi providers not providing any kind of coverage when they should be. My question is, why are the providers, it looks like you have full bars and you still maybe can't get a signal. I never understood why that was happening. Uh, so the bars are a lie. Okay. I, I wrote the code for Mac OS to display the bars. I assure you it's fake. Um, <laughs> Low bars generate support faults. Ah, uh, so what? How are you different? Like what? I, I mean. So the the point the the reason to bring in the cryptocurrency and to have all the sort of complication and I, I I grant you it's not an easy thing to explain in five minutes, is that we want to set up the uh, alignment of incentives, mm -hmm. to make it possible. So I mean, remember the coins only show up when you verify that you've provided access. Right. So today you pay AT and T or Verizon a hundred dollars a month, and they will try. Um, we're not rewarding anyone until we've seen them actually do the work. Okay. Uh, so you're you're essentially taking on Comcast. All of them, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and the rest. Okay. We can't we can't survive without Comcast without AT and T. The di the distribution network that exists is an incredible resource investment. Uh, we're trying to do the same thing that a lot of other sharing economy companies are doing, which is take the existing infrastructure and restructure it in a way that works better for consumers as opposed to working better for, you know, Uber's a better deal for consumers than it is for auto manufacturers, right? Uber means fewer cars on the road over time, get around similarly, right? So we're trying to restructure the bandwidth market in such a way that it works for us and not for the people making money at Comcast. Um, so... I had to support the first airport base stations 
at tech support at Apple in college. So I know that was before your time, but I still accept your apology. Because <laughs> it was awful. Thank you. Thank it was you. awful. Um, so it's, ver it's very hard. So, you know, I like the concept of what you're talking about, but I'm not sure I quite understand on a technical level. You know, are you, so you're basically asking all these other providers and networks to sort of prove themselves to you um, through a, a, a merit system? Um, I mean, so the would that be fair to say? So our role in the economy is sort of, or the sort of bandwidth economy is twofold. The, force, the first is, uh, in order to pull this off, you have to have an access point that's enabled with some software. So we're going to start by selling those. Um, but the real heart of the system is the verifiers, right? The fact that there's someone watching and making sure that the connections are really happening and that it's not you paid into your contract and, you know, we, it might work. So that's the biggest, the biggest part. Of, and that's, you know, that's also sort of where we make, where we make revenue. Right, like so, when when transactions happen, we skim just like any other, you know, just like the Bitcoin network itself does. Um, so we're trying to align the incentives the same way miners are incented now to contribute to Bitcoin. The access point becomes the miner. Alf, I don't mean to steal your thunder, but the Giants won. <laughs> Woo! Is that, is that some sort of sporting contest? <laughs> it's a sporting contest. These really big guys are playing somewhere. Hi, um, I was wondering, uh, how are you going to guarantee a reasonable and usable level of uh, service for, for uh, people? Because, I mean, I step out of my house, and my connectivity is not really good at all. And you guys are just going to tie together people's Wi-Fi networks? Wait, so I, the interesting thing about, especially, I mean, here in America is sort of a worst-case scenario. Um, we have, uh, in the cellular arena, multiple parallel networks. The aggregate of those is amazing, right? Each one individually is just okay. So, you know, you can, with, if you're a Mossu customer, you roam from carrier to carrier as necessary as bandwidth is available. Some, somebody does have to take the hit, become a provider, and deal with the carrier, but they're getting rewarded for it. So there's, you know, a little bit of kickback. And I'm out of time. So I'm here all night. Talk to me later. All right. Thank Alex. you, Miles. Good job. Thank you, sir.